Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, where, as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody is doing well out there. A little shout-out to my Texas Aggies. That was a fun win yesterday. It's always exciting watching that. Well, I've got a bit of an important show today, so I hope you can stick with me. It's it's about a topic that I don't think any any of us uh, love, but it's, it's a topic that um, we need to address. And one of the main reasons we invest in, in lifestyle, or excuse me, one of the main reasons we invest in real estate is the tax advantages. We make money five different ways on single family homes and six different ways on apartment communities. But a primary reason is the advantages and tax advantages are absolutely one of those that are in our favor as a real estate investor. Now, I understand the the election is in the background. The media has definitely named Vice President Biden the president, and he has some radical tax proposals. But I don't want to get into the what ifs on today's show. We'll address those if and when the changes come down the pipeline. And I'm not so certain, so, uh, so sure those will actually happen. It's it's going to be uh, crucial to see how the Senate goes. But that being said, what I do want to get into today on, on a basic level is just how uh, the leverage of the tax advantages helps us so much as real estate investors. And I have a guest on today's show to help me do just that, a friend of mine and my tax ally, my tax uh, chief, Nate Roberts from Lifestyles uh, from Lifetime Tax Advisors. Nate, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely, it's been about a year since we've had you on, and so that time to to get you back on. We're winding the year down; a couple of months to to go here. But yeah, thanks for coming on, Nate. And this morning, let's just talk about some of the basics of the tax strategies and advantages that we have. Uh, as real estate investors. But before we get to that, why don't we go ahead and let me just throw this out there. We have a president who's worth $3.8 billion. He has over $400 million in loans, and yet he paid only $750 in income taxes. How how the heck did that happen? Well, I'd still, I'd like to actually see the returns myself. I've, yeah. I've done a lot of searching, and I know that there are stories out there <clears throat> about it. I mean, yeah. he 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 indicated. I mean, he did seem to indicate that it probably was seven hundred and fifty dollars for two years, which seems really really odd. Yeah. But that being said, I mean, your tax picture that's only that's only one small slice of the pie. It it, it aggregates over many many years. So right. some things I've read said he's he's paid in over you know some years he paid over seventy million in taxes. Yeah. And all that stuff right now is supposition because, or at least. I'm going to take it with a grain of salt until I can actually see what it looks like. And with hundreds of companies and the complexities he's got, I mean, he's got some. He's probably got some good tax planning people doing it. Oh, we, I'm making, sure he has the best. He's he's a smart guy, and no one should pay more than they're required. And if he only paid seven fifty, then he must be doing something better than a lot of other people out there. Yeah. Well, and that, and that's exactly it. The goal is to pay what you minim, the legal amount that you or the minimum amount that you legally have to. Right. I mean, nobody says that you have to go out there and try and figure out every single way you give up too much money. Right. That's not I, the goal. I, I think honestly, if, if someone saw our tax returns or my personal tax returns, uh, and they didn't know any better, they may throw darts my way, and they may say, "Well, look at look at the income you had coming in. How come you only paid this?" And and people are quick to to throw things out there, but there's incredible advantages to owning a business and there's incredible advantages to especially owning a real estate business. Yeah. 
and it's it's a combination of things, but also you're putting in a lot of time, you're putting in your efforts, and it's just like anything else. If I if I'm paying too much for electricity, I'm going to go find a, a cheaper electricity provider. If I'm paying too much for taxes, I'm going to see what I can do to bring that cost down. Bring and it's down. Really just kind of a pain point, right? Which I mean, people it, don't like paying taxes. <laughs> people do not like paying taxes, and those were income taxes. I, I think it's important to throw out that. Um, there's different types of taxes. There's, or excuse me, there's different types of income, right? You can have income through capital gains. You can have portfolio income, and then you can have W two income, and those all work differently. Uh, and again, I'm I'm thankful I've got a guy like you to help me sort through that and to use the advantages of of something along those lines. Yeah, and what we're talking about there is just the income taxes because you've got. You've got estate taxes, you've got payroll taxes, you've got sales and use taxes. There's all different types of taxes. And even just having employees, you're paying in effectively 15.3% somewhere. Exactly. Between, just on payroll taxes. So yep. just because somebody's not paying a lot in income taxes doesn't mean they're not paying a lot of taxes somewhere else. That's for sure. I mean, imagine the property taxes he's paying on those hotels. Oh, good night. Yes. Tens of millions, especially in some of the places where he owns those properties. So I, I think a big reason why it only boiled down to 750 if indeed that's true, or maybe that's only what was owed at that time, might have been depreciation um, on those businesses. Nate, can you, we've got about a minute left before we go to break, maybe. Could you just tell us what depreciation is? Depreciation is just getting, it, it's a tax advantage that Congress allows, because when you buy something over time, it gets used, you're losing the value of it, and you're getting to take some of it. So if I buy a car, it's not worth the same in a year that it was the day I bought it. So it's just a way to get some benefit from all that money I paid. Right. It's you're you're depreciating the asset because it's a business, right? That rental property, it's it's more than just a rental property, that single family home. That is a business at one, two, three Maplewood. And as a business, that's that's not a house that I'm living in. It's it's a house that I'm utilizing for a great resident to live in. So is that what you're saying? I can I can essentially depreciate that over time because it is a business. So, Nate, they're pushing us out. I want to come back and maybe look at depreciation in light of, is it a good idea to have a mortgage on that, quote-unquote, business? But we'll be right back after a short break. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Dell Wamsley talks about buying your way back from corporate America through real estate. A massive change in my life. My personal residence I lived in was a one-bedroom condo, cost $425 a month. This covered it. My automobile car payment was only $300 and some dollars a month. This covered it. I was buying my way back from corporate America. I could feel it. Lifestyles Unlimited will teach you how to buy your way back from corporate America. Get in control. Get into our live online free workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Warning, listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. I have a guest on today's show, Nate Roberts with Lifetime TA. He is my tax person in Helps me along the way as a real estate investor. And there's just numerous advantages to investing in real estate. And, and a primary one of those is the tax advantages. And if you have any questions for Nate or myself, I encourage you to call the show. Our number is 855-497-4335. 855-497-4335. Or you can email me, askmike at luinc.com. Askmike at luinc.com. And I know many of you catch this show on podcast after it's aired. Feel free to send me that question. I do respond personally to each and every email I get. So, Nate, when we left off, we were talking about depreciation. And I like to have a mortgage on my properties. Uh, what it does, essentially, it, it minimizes that cash flow. I like to keep that cash flow 
uh, above 300, but really no more. And it, it's based on the value of my asset, but really no more than $600 because I start getting into an area to where that cash flow is not tax free, not 100% tax free when we start getting up there. And so, Nate, do you want to touch on uh, at least why I think it's a good idea to have a mortgage on that property or why I do have a mortgage? Yeah, and, and as far as why it's good, or, or I mean, there there are there are pros and cons. So I understand one of the reasons that it's nice to have the mortgage is you're going to use somebody else's money, and you're going to buy a bigger, better asset. You're getting to depreciate more of it, and but again, it's going to be a judgment call. So whether what works for one person and what one person's comfortable with may not be the same for somebody else. I've got people who love the leverage and I've got people who they've you know, they've been in debt, they've had some bad experiences with it, and so they want to pay all cash. You know, they may not be able to to buy up and, and buy as many houses and start creating all that cash flow, but they're more comfortable with it. So it really comes down to a comfort level. But as far as hey, if I I can't buy as many houses on my own as I can if I go out and get a mortgage. And and when I get that mortgage, you know, I can buy two or three or five or ten houses a whole lot more easily than if I had to come up with the cash for all ten houses. Right. And at the same time, you know, I've got to pay back some interest. So for somebody else taking on some risk with me, they're getting paid. But at the same time, I can also deduct some of that. So I didn't yes. have to come up with as much cash out of pocket. Yes. So – we get to deduct the interest expense on those loans. Is that what you're saying? In general, so <laughs> let, let me let me use my let me use my usual caveat. In general, yeah. yes, yes. So there's all there's there's lots of different rules, and I mean, I do it. If you just go out and look, yeah. If you go out and look at at the Internal Revenue Code, there's thousands and thousands of different sections to it, and that doesn't include tax court cases, revenue rulings, revenue procedures, all sorts of different. I mean, there's you can fill whole libraries with all the tax code. Yeah, but in general, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, unfortunately. But you know, you've got millions of people who are trying to figure out how to pay as little in taxes as possible, and so they have to keep on adding rules because people find ways to pay as little as possible. And then at some point, somebody says, "Nah, I want this to work this way." So Congress sets new rules. IRS sets new rules. You elect a new president, they set new rules, so it's constantly changing. Yeah, and it's a lot of it's interpretation. Let's come back to that depreciation piece. So, Nate, if I had a $100,000 home in value, right, um, and that's not getting into the land expense or any of that, let's just say the, the property itself was $100,000, what am I depreciating? What portion of that home can I depreciate annually? You're going to be depreciating the, the portion that's actually to the house. So yeah. the house is going to have house and land, and there's different ways you can value it, but one of the easiest ways that the IRS generally accepts is if you look at your property tax appraisal, let's say that 20% goes to the land and 80% is to the house, you get to depreciate 80% of that $100,000. So you get to depreciate 80, 80% of 100000 Yeah. and Let's say the house over. itself was a hundred for Aggie math. So it's uh, 27.5, right? 127.5% annually? Yeah, that's what I was going to I was going to pick 275 just cuz that make <laughs> let's go let's go with the simple yeah. math. Yeah. 27.5 and 275,000 is a whole lot easier. Yeah. Make, so I can I can write off numbers about 10,000 a year. Yeah. Um $2,750 we can write off and so essentially if the profit of that business is less than $2,750 we pay no tax, correct? Yeah, it, it it just you can actually cash flow it, but yeah, it. So let's just let's let's take that number. So let's just say we're depreciating two thousand seven hundred fifty per year. If I mean, you could still be bringing in some cash, yeah, but you could be reporting a taxable loss because let's say you brought in two thousand, but in addition, you've got a twenty two thousand seven hundred fifty dollar deduction. You're reporting that you lost seven hundred fifty dollars for taxes. Yes, that's it. That's that's it in a nutshell. It, at the most basic level, 
that's how we're able to get the income, essentially, of that property to be tax-free. That's just simple. The cash flow is tax-free, so um, twenty seven hundred. Well, let, let me let me stop yeah. you there on that one. It, it's yeah. tax deferred. At some point, you're going to pay back that depreciation, but right. there are strategies you can use to keep kicking that can down the road. How long do you want to do it? That's another question. Right, right. Um, depreciate, 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 or or excuse me, defer, 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 defer and die, and then die, and then our children inherit those those properties or whoever we decide to leave the properties to at the stepped-up basis. What the heck is that? Uh, that's a great question. And so under existing code, let's just say I've got that $100,000 house. Yeah. I've depreciated the thing down to, to next to nothing. If I were to turn around and sell it at, let's just say, $200,000, I'm picking up a $200,000 gain. Yeah. Under the current tax code, yeah. Well, and at 20%, I mean, that's $40,000 that I'd be paying in taxes. Right. However, if if I've got that house and I defer and I defer and I defer, and then I die, and let's say it's worth $200,000 when I die, my kids turn around and sell it. When I die, they get that step up in basis. So it's it, it's worth 200000 for tax purposes, it's worth $200,000. Yeah. They sell for $200,000. I got zero gain. So instead yep. of paying forty thousand in taxes, my kids pay zero. Now it doesn't help me because I'm I'm not here, but it help my kids. Yes. So for you on paper, it's a hundred thousand dollar home that you depreciated down to nothing. Um, but for your kids, it's really a two hundred thousand dollar home. It's all numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all numbers. Yeah. So defer, defer, defer. That's just, that's just one of the strategies. Okay, so we can depreciate the home. We can actually write off the interest expense with the loan associated with it, right? I can't even... Well, they're pushing us out. Um, We're going to come back and just continue discussing the advantages, the tax advantages associated with real estate investing. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. Happy Sunday. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. I have on our show today a special guest, Nate Roberts, and Nate is my tax person. Uh, and helps me immensely with real estate investing. If you have any questions for Nate or or myself, our number is 855-497-4335, 855-497-4335. Or as always, feel free to shoot me an email. I always respond personally to my email, askmike at luinc.com, askmike at luinc.com. Nate, before we get too much further, I understand for our Lifestyles Unlimited members, uh, there's a couple of tax panel discussions this week that they can log into. Is that correct? Yeah. The, uh, the one I'm going to tout right now is going to be the one that we're going to do on Tuesday. We're going to be doing a, a, a tax panel on the single-family homes. So it's kind of, it's a good place to get your feet wet, ask a lot of questions about single-family homes. Yeah. And then there's also one on, on Wednesday as well. So if okay. you're interested in, in kind of diving in a little bit more, getting more you know, slides and, and a deeper explanation of some of the stuff, because it, it, it takes a couple times of hearing it before you really start to grasp what the concept is. Absolutely. It's, um, so the way the panel works, this, obviously it's all going to be virtual. I've, I've attended several of these in person, but there's panelists that are, that are there, and, and you're going to be one of them. And then there's the crowd, right? That's everybody that's tuning in, and they're just going to lob question after question to y'all and and let you answer them. Correct? Yeah, that's part of it. We also, I mean, we come up with our we've we've come up with probably ten or fifteen different questions that are commonly asked already. So just, okay. Yeah. So 
I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a general discussion, but a lot of questions that people ask us all the time, we're going to be talking about it because it's it's we know so many people have it. It's yeah. just faster for us to knock them all out all, all up front. Yeah. And, and you know, one thing, and I just thought of this, is that I've learned as a real estate investor, um, it's interesting that you'll answer a tax question one way, and the person next to you will answer it different, and that the tax code is a lot of interpretation is what it is. It's not cut and dry. It's not like, you must do this in this situation. It's, well, I interpret the way they write it, and so for my clients, I do it this way. Is that, uh, that that's fascinating to me. Yeah, well, think about it, though. You've got, you've got, they're trying to take one rule, and yeah. they're trying to apply it across hundreds of millions of people. Right. And if you take one rule, and you say this is the way it has to be applied every time, I'm going to find a way around it. Right. So, they, but you've got, you've got lawyers who go through and write this stuff, and it's not like reading, you know, a fun novel. I mean, you're talking, <laughs> you're, you're, you're reading legal language. It's, and better you through, than me, my friend. How to apply it. Yeah. Better you than me, yeah. my friend. That's uh, I am. I'm very happy. I've got you. I've, I've got you to help me out. Um, but yeah, just the fact that the code is interpretation, and it's not wrong unless you get a letter from the IRS that says, "Why'd you do this? Please explain more." Um, kind of thing, which I've, I've never had that. Knock on wood, uh, and I don't want that. I want to do it right every time. I want to obey the law. But again, I don't want to pay any more dollars to the government than I absolutely have to. Yeah. I mean, the main thing you've got to think about when you're signing a tax return is yeah. you're, you're declaring under penalties of perjury that's true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Right. So you want to make sure it's true and accurate. I mean, they do have this nice word called fraud. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I mean, no. the IRS has got lots of weapons that, that I mean, oh, that's just not, it's not a fun place to be. I would but rather owe accurately. the mafia. I'd rather owe the mafia money than owe the IRS. I'm just telling you from a personal standpoint. Yeah. No, they're the biggest, most powerful collection agency in the world, and they're pretty good at what they do. Yeah, no so doubt. I, I don't suggest messing with them. And, I mean, when you get a letter from them, take it serious. Yeah. Hire a pro, my but, friends. Yeah. Hire a pro. And when, yep. So, Nate, um, all right, we've got these rental properties, and – I'm I'm doing repairs and I'm doing improvements. There's a difference between the two. Do you want to tell us tell us the difference between the two in regards to tax implications? Yeah, I mean there there's hundreds of pages that are written about this and the IRS is I mean they've tried to make it a little more bright line, but here here's here's the simplest way to think about it. A repair is just something that puts something back in its original condition. An improvement is something that makes it better, it adapts it for a new purpose, or it restores it, you know, or it restores it to, like, if it was just so far beyond repair that yeah. I mean, you had to. So one great example for real estate is this. I've got a 15-year roof, a 15-year life roof. And, Mike, I know this is kind of your background, so you can, you, you can probably nail this a lot better than I can. But on a 15-year roof, if I, if it's leaking and I'm going up there and I'm, I'm making some changes to it and, and just you know covering some holes, that's a repair. Right. If I've got to if I've got to completely replace it, but it's, I replace it with a 15-year roof, that's a repair. Conversely, if I've got a 15-year roof and I upgrade it to a class four 30-year roof, I've made it. It's a better roof now than what I originally had. That's an improvement. So at that point, I've got to capitalize it and depreciate it. It goes back to that depreciation thing we were talking about earlier. So yes. repair just just kind of puts it back in the same condition. It already you know just keeps it going. Hey, you have a leak. We fixed it, it. Yeah, we you have a leak. We fixed it, and that's a repair. Here's your bill. Pay it. Um, improvement. Uh, this is North Texas. Um, we get a lot of hail, so hailstorm hailstorm hits, and you put an entire new roof on that home. So um, how do we, we get to essentially write off both of those, but there's different, there's different avenues that you use. Is that what you're saying, Nate? Yeah, there's different mechanisms, the timing, and there's other, I mean, there's other strategies you can use to, I mean, even if you've got a damaged roof and you replace it with a better one, there's some strategies you can use to get bigger benefits now. Yeah. I mean, we can start getting into cost segregations and partial dispositions and some other fun things. But at some point, 
you put money into it, you're gonna get you're gonna get some sort of benefit from it. But there's a yeah. reason. You, I mean, you're, you're still running a business. You put the money into it to run the business, right? And then you just wrap the tax code around it. You're trying to get the best result. Yeah, I, I look at it like this: that new roof on that rental property is the same as, let's say, somebody owns uh, an air conditioning business, right? And they buy um, a new truck or a new trailer or something along those lines um, or improve the business in in some manner. Essentially, we're kind of looking at those two things the same on our tax on our taxes. Is that correct? Kind of? Yeah. I mean, at, at the highest level, that's exactly it. You know, yeah. Whether you're buying a truck, whether you're putting yeah. it on our roof, it still keeps your business going. So it's still right. a cost you got to take, but at the same time, you it, for for tax purposes, you're getting a benefit at some point. Right, right. So how about my deductible? Um, let's say I've got a two thousand dollar deductible on that rental property. Gets hit by a hailstorm, um, business expense. Correct, right? I'm having to come out of pocket and pay that. How do, how does that work? Yes or no? Yeah, that was gonna that was gonna get a little bit into the weeds, but let's just let. As you're paying the insurance, you're getting a deduction for the insurance, and then however much you're paying out of pocket. I mean, sometimes you can get more back in insurance. You may even be picking up some income, but you didn't. You know, you if I if I've got a ten thousand dollar check from an IRS or from the uh, sorry, not the IRS, from the insurance company, and it only yeah. costs me seventy five hundred bucks. You know what? I got twenty five hundred bucks back. It's, it's actually a little income because I yeah. didn't, I didn't have to pay a cent. Yeah. If I had to put some money into it, then we start getting into repairs, replacements, you know, lots of additional minutia. But right. again, at some point, if you spent money on it, you'll get. I mean, it's it's going to just go into the equation. If you spent money on the business, yes, it goes in there, and, and there's essentially you're going to get some of that back with the tax advantage. So even the insurance for the property, we're we're writing that off, right? Yeah, you're writing that off. I mean. And, and, and things that people don't even think about, like mileage. Ah, if you're driving hey, out, if you're driving Nate, out, let's come oh, back yeah. to that. They're pushing us out. We've got a this this show's going by quickly. Uh, we'll be right back after a short break. My name is Mike Harrison with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're talking track tax strategies associated with rental properties. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. My name is Mike Harrison. As always, we're working on your financial freedom. Part of that financial freedom is paying attention to your biggest partner, or I guess, I don't even want to say partner, but the the person that, that can take money out of your pocket, and that's the tax man. And so uh, very important that we take care of our properties and run our businesses in a way, but we don't want to pay any more tax than we have to. And that's why I have a professional on my team, Nate Roberts with Lifetime TA. And Nate, before we get too much further, how can the listener get a hold of you if they um, need your services or have some tax questions for yourself? Okay, well, thanks for, thanks for asking that. So probably the best place to start if you want to try and get a hold of myself or somebody in our, our firm is to go to access at lifetimeta.com, or you can call our main line. It's 972-771-6707. You can go to our website. It's www.lifetimeta.com. We've got lots of different ways. Uh, Facebook, I think. I'm, I'm trying to remember some of the other social media, but I've got to ask our marketing department. Probably that. Google you, Lifetime TA yeah. here in Dallas, Fort Worth. So, and if you're if you miss the early part of this show and you want to go back and find it, you can find us on the podcast app. You can find us at the Lifestyles Unlimited website. Just click on the radio button, and you'll see the shows there. Um, so, a lot of ways to find this show. Obviously, if you miss it, you can go back and, and you can pick it up uh, on the YouTube channel as well. Lifestyles Unlimited has their own channel on YouTube. So, Nate, um, also, I understand we're having a the tax panel discussion. Um, that's happening this week. Uh, was Did you say Tuesday? 
Yeah, the one I'm going to be on will be Tuesday. I'm not, and maybe Wednesday just depends. But right, okay, and that's for our members. And and heck, our our membership is so cheap; it's only two hundred ninety seven dollars. Um, you go to financialfreedomlivestream dot com. Uh, this tax panel discussion. If you've got some some rental assets and and you want to get some good information, this tax panel would be the price of admission, right there, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, and you're on two ninety seven cheap. Yes, it's two ninety seven for two years. Again, that's financialfreedomlivestream.com. dot com. Okay, when we left off, uh, we were talking about um, well, the whole show is about advantages to investing in real estate. Let's talk about travel a little bit, Nate. Yeah, well, I think, and, and when it comes down to travel, I mean, there's different things. Are we talking about? Dri- are we talking about just driving out to our rental properties? Or are we trying to take a vacation in Disney World and write it off? <laughs> um, you can do that, right? There's just um, certain rules, as I understand it. Um, uh, yeah, maybe touch yeah, on that I, just a little bit. Yeah. So, so, I mean, let's let's keep it pretty simple. There are, there are ways to write off travel, but you really have to have a business purpose behind it. So, right. I mean, it, just from my experience sitting down with IRS auditors, one of the main questions they're going to ask is, well, if you took if you went over to Disney World, what were you doing there that you couldn't do you know, somewhere else? Like, so I mean, there's some that are that are much easier. Mileage is is a lot easier. You just primarily have to keep track of your actual travel. And right. Then, then you get standard costs or actual costs. There's, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it and slice and dice it. But, right. I mean, so anywhere you're from. S- oh, go ahead. I was going to say. So you're saying the IRS would say, uh, "Why did you go to Aruba to discuss your rental property?" And the answer may be, "Well, I didn't go to discuss one rental property. It was our our annual uh, board meeting. Right. I had myself and and my wife there, and we own this company that happens to own." Um, 30 rental assets, and we had a four-hour discussion, and we rented this room and had that discussion in the room. It's it's so something like that would hold up, correct? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go with in, in general. Maybe there you might be able to make an argument for a day of your trip there, but if you're yeah. going to, if you're going to Aruba for a week and you spent four hours one day talking about it, you're not writing off the whole thing. Yeah, you're not writing off that whole thing, and even then, you, you're. You're still going to have some interesting conversations with an IRS agent, so you want to be ready for that if, yeah. if you really why, want to get that that assertive. Well, why take a chance um, um, along those lines? And, and really, you're only talking a few hundred bucks at most um, at the end of the day. But let's talk about that mileage. Let's say we have an apartment community, um, and it's on the other. I mean, it could take you an hour and a half to get from one side of Dallas-Fort Worth to the other, um, and it might be 60 miles away. So we get to write that off, correct? Yeah, if you're if you're driving out there to go visit a rental property, you've got your tra- you got your trip over, you got your trip back. Just make sure that you've got a log. I mean, even if you've got a fleet of of cars and you've got your own property management company, yeah, you could have twenty people who are making tri- trips all over the place. You still yeah. have to keep track of your mileage. I haven't seen yeah. anything that says you don't. So the IRS comes in, they see the travel. It's probably going to be a question you want to be ready to answer. There's so an app. There's several records. apps on your phone. You just push the button and, and start, and it'll log it in, the time and day and everything else. Yeah, just like everything else now, there's there's an app for that. I mean, you don't, <laughs> have, to, you don't have to have some, some mileage book in your car. Right. And, and there's different ways you can do it, too. I mean, the easiest way is you track every trip, but there are other acceptable methods where, let's just say that's a pain. You can, I mean, there's there's averaging methods and some other things you can do. So. Yeah. Excellent. The one that so, everybody knows the best is tracking just each each trip. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's beautiful. We're writing off the fuel. We're writing off uh, some of the uh, uh, expense of the vehicles, the upkeep expense. Um, so, yeah, travel's, a, again, another write-off by, by owning real estate properties. So, Nate, let's get into one. We've got a little bit of time left that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I'm in several passive deals in these apartment communities, and at the end of the year, I get what's called a K one, and mine always shows losses. Tell us, tell us what a K one is. What are the advantages, the tax treatments? Um, I know you can go on a long time for that, but let's try to uh, hit the K one here uh, while we have time. Yeah. So, 
just to kind of keep it real simple, a K-1 is a reflection of how a business performed during the year for tax purposes. So if I own 5% of a company, if if it's let's say if it's Amazon, Amazon pays its own tax and then just pays pays me a dividend. A K one instead of Amazon paying the tax, I'm paying the tax on that business because it flows through directly to me. Part owner. So yeah, yeah. so I'm getting five percent of that comp or just depending on what your agreement is. And there's lots of ways this works, but I'm getting you know if you're showing losses, you're getting five percent of those losses to offset other passive income somewhere else. Now with the K one and depending on where you where you fall into the whole structure, if you're a passive investor, so you 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 go you write a check, somebody else takes care of the property, you get a check back in the mailbox. You're passive. You're not really doing anything to run the business. And those losses just kind of build up until you've got some other passive income to offset them. Now you can still be you can still be getting cash out of those deals, but that cash is, I mean, it, it's just reducing your basis, but you're not getting taxed on it because you're still showing tax. In general, you're not getting taxed on it because you're still showing taxable losses. At some point, those rules kind of get a little more complicated. I'm not going to get into, into that on the radio. Yeah. But, I mean, you can be getting cash flow from a passive investment. You can be getting taxable losses, and you can just be taking that money and putting it into something something new. Right. Right, and reducing your basis. I, that's great. If you've got W-2 income, that's one way you can pull that basis, that tax basis down. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I think we're kind of we're, – we're getting a couple things. <laughs> in, Get in a rabbit hole. I yeah, got you. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, W-2, the W-2 is is one bucket of income. The yeah. K-1 is a different bucket of income. But, yeah. yeah, you can be making W-2 income, and you can be making – you can be getting cash off your investments with a K-1. Right. And not and not paying additional tax on those. I mean, there's ways to do that. Gotcha. Well, Nate, let me let me touch this one. I I pay you um, a, a fair sum to do my taxes annually. Um, do I get to write that off when for hiring a professional? So it depends. If if we're for your businesses, yeah, it's 100 yeah. percent deductible. On yeah. your personal, there's ways to deduct parts of it. I mean, some of it's going to be Related to personal, like, and it used to be that you got to deduct your your tax prep fees on Schedule A. Right now, that's actually been withdrawn until at least twenty twenty five. It's supposed we're supposed to get it back in twenty twenty six. Yeah, might you know might change next year. I don't know, but currently, however, if some of those you know there's ways to maybe take some of that against some of your rental properties or against some other areas. So, I mean, just depends on how depends on what what the costs are and how you view it. Yeah. Boy, am I glad I have you to, to look at this stuff. I mean, yeah, some of these taxes come in and out depending on, on what year and, and this and that. So, uh, Nate, again, I really appreciate having you on the show. Um, thank you so much. And, and you're just valuable, um, to my, to what I do, uh, owning my business. And, and I really appreciate, uh, you taking the time this morning. Yeah, well, I'm happy to be here. I, I appreciate you having me on and, Look forward to catching up again more soon. Excellent. So to you listeners out there, I, I want you to understand, I know we got off on the weeds a little bit on today's show, but there are numerous advantages to owning rental property. That's why we invest in real estate. Numerous advantages, and one of the biggest is the tax advantage. But we have pros like Nate Roberts from Lifetime TA to help us with that. My name is Mike Harrison. Until next time, I want you to remember, it's not about the money. It's all about the lifestyle. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.